Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. A dangerous asteroid that somehow escaped our notice may be on a collision course with our planet in October of 2024. How did this asteroid escape our notice for so long, and how likely is it that it might hit our planet? And if it does make impact, how devastating is the event going to be? And meanwhile, there's a comet making its way through our solar system that does not present any sort of current danger, but is exhibiting strange behavior that could present a very serious threat sometime in the future. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I am heading back to the UK tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it, but I won't be staying terribly long, it looks like, because I'm going to have to return in about three and a half weeks or so in order to see the maiden flight of Vulcan Centaur, if indeed that launch takes place. Part of me thought about just staying in the United States until then, but there's no guarantee that that launch is actually going to happen and really staying here for that amount of time would be in many ways a lot more disruptive and costly to me than going back to the UK where I have now have my uh, housing arrangements all set up. A complicated life that I lead but at the same time this is what I was asking for. So all of that having been said, NASA has been keeping up with a couple of interesting objects. Well, interesting in some ways, terrifying in others. One one of these is a near-Earth object that we lost track of for a while. These sorts of objects do fall outside of our vision periodically simply because they orbit a bit too close to the sun. Many of these objects have an orbital trajectory that takes them within the sun's glare and makes it impossible for them to be observed for a long period of time. And when they finally do emerge, sometimes their trajectories are not not what we anticipated, and that is indeed the case with this particular object, which may be heading on a collision course with Earth sometime in October. I want to be very clear, the odds of an impact are extremely low, and as we gather more information about this asteroid's actual trajectory and velocity, probably going to rule it out as a dangerous asteroid fairly soon. That's what I anticipate. But nevertheless, the fact that this thing essentially came out of nowhere and could be on a collision course with our planet in 10 months or so, well, that's disturbing. And it begs the question, is there a way that we can detect these objects even if they are lost in the sun's glare? And then there's a huge comet also making its way through the solar system. This one, of course, is not on a collision course. It's going to be millions of kilometers away from Earth when it uh, completes its orbital trajectory around the sun. However, it is exhibiting some unusual behavior. Behavior that can have an impact on its trajectory, can change its direction. And this is a common thing with all comets. Very difficult to accurately predict where a comet is really going to go because of these strange characteristics unique to comets. Characteristics that were also exhibited, by the way, by an object that passed through our solar system in 2017 that was not a comet, yet its trajectory varied as well for reasons that we still can't figure out. The object in question is classified as 2007 FT3, and as the name suggests, it was first observed on the 20th of March of 2007, when the asteroid was roughly 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. However, the nature of this asteroid's orbit, and the nature of our own orbit, means that we only get to see this asteroid for 1.2 days during each of our respective orbital periods. During the rest of the time, the Sun hides this asteroid from our view. That being the case then, we really don't get enough data on this thing to have a reasonable idea of where it's going to pop up. 
We thought that it might hit the planet on October 2nd of 2013, and then October 3rd of 2019, and now we have a potential impact coming up on October 3rd, 2024. Although the odds are very, very small, and let me try to explain why. Because we have gathered so little information about this asteroid, the uncertainty region of where it's going to pass in relation to our planet is absolutely enormous. We're talking about an uncertainty of 500 million kilometers, which basically means that we have no idea where the damn thing is going to pop up until we see it for that brief fleeting 1.2 days that we get an opportunity to catch sight of it. That being the case then, it has a 1 in 11 million chance of hitting our planet on October 3rd. However, this is substantially more likely than the 2013 virtual impactor, which was calculated at a 1 in 1.9 billion chance of happening. So a hell of a lot more likely, but still incredibly unlikely. However, the fact that there's a chance at all is something that needs to be taken very seriously. Why? Because this thing is roughly 340 meters in diameter, substantially larger than the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. So what would happen if this object were to make contact with our planet? And let's say it were to impact somewhere over London, England, since I happen to be living fairly close to there. What if I, in Milton Keynes, were to witness this impact and be unfortunate enough to be standing there at the moment that it hit London, England? Well, it's a pretty frightening scenario. So let's get on with it. Boom! The initial blast would be utterly devastating, unlike anything that our civilization has experienced at least since perhaps the Krakatoa eruption, but probably even more powerful than that. We're talking about 824 megatons, or 41,200 Hiroshima bombs. A nuclear blast 16 times more powerful than the legendary Tsar Bomba dropped by the Soviet Union something unlike anything our modern civilization has ever experienced. And it would be fortunate indeed if it exploded over land, or rather impacted into solid rock, and I'm going to let you know why that's the case here in just a moment. Now, first of all, the crater would completely alter the London landscape forever. We're talking a kilometer in diameter and approximately 200 meters deep. Utterly devastating. However, only a handful of people would be vaporized inside the crater. Why? Well, because they would have been vaporized by the blast before the crater was even created. Have a look at this fireball. This would be sufficient to incinerate all of London and all of its suburbs. Although the fireball would not quite reach Milton Keynes, which by the way is approximately 88 kilometers away from the center of London, well, the resulting firestorm would probably reach Milton Keynes in very short order, and if you couldn't evacuate in time, you would most probably be caught by the flames. However, that being the case, at least it would not impact anybody really outside of the London region, that is to say the expanded London region, including all of its suburbs such as Hammersmith and Brixton, and even nearby towns like Watford, Slough, Luton, Crowley, really a lot of people would be affected. We're talking millions upon millions of dead unless there was a wholesale evacuation carried out. But keep in mind, if you're talking about a little asteroid like this, relatively little compared to others, and the large degree of uncertainty when you're talking about an impact, it would be very difficult to evacuate the precise area that the impact was scheduled to take place in without some degree of uncertainty, which would make evacuating an area very difficult indeed. But nevertheless, we are only talking about regional destruction and perhaps fires that would have a limited impact on our climate. 
that's about it. But still, utterly devastating. And the fact that something like this could happen sometime this year should compel us to take near-Earth objects a little bit more seriously. Oh, you need more information? Well, how about the overpressure wave? This one would reach Milton Keynes and would be sufficient to knock down at least relatively small structures. That is to say, houses, but not skyscrapers. Oh yeah, and it would probably blow out your eardrums as well. But if that isn't enough for you, well, the wind speeds would be higher than the winds on Jupiter, over a thousand kilometers an hour near the impact zone, and once again, enough to knock down trees and small structures in Milton Keynes. And by the way, winds of this kind of power would also fan the flames significantly of the resulting firestorm. So once again, lots of nastiness, but none of that compares to the potential dangers of an impact off the coastline. Even a relatively small asteroid like this would dig a substantial crater at the bottom of the ocean and create a tsunami over 500 meters high. But an impact like this would be a minor little firecracker compared to a comet hitting our planet, especially a comet like 12P Pons Brooks, which has been approaching our sun for a considerable amount of time and will represent no threat whatsoever to Earth, at least at the moment. However, one thing that has been very interesting about this comet is its tendency to have volcanic outgassings from the comet itself. They seem to resemble devil horns, or at least the ejecta coming out of these ice canos is the best thing to call them. These eruptions are not only impressive, they're also a cause for concern, because this kind of outgassing changes the velocity and trajectory of a comet. Not by a tremendous amount, but over the course of years, it can actually have a fairly substantial impact. Certainly not enough to to change this comet's trajectory to where it's going to represent any sort of threat during this particular close approach. And we can hardly even really call it a close approach because it's going to pass about 232 million kilometers away from our planet. That's a hell of a long ways, and actually it's probably going to get substantially closer to planets like Venus. That being the case, though, other comets that enter our solar system may have trajectories that are unpredictable because of this type of outgassing. Now, in the case of a Muamua that was not a comet, nor an asteroid, its trajectory changed as well, and most astronomers think that it was some kind of outgassing that caused this change of trajectory and velocity. It had an impact of several hundred thousand kilometers on the object, which would have required at least 20% of the object having been converted into a gas in some sort of explosive outgassing. Outgassing that was never detected, by the way, but it is theoretically possible for something like this to happen. Once again, even though I don't believe that a Muamua was a comet or its trajectory was changed by any sort of outgassing, invisible outgassing that is, I do believe that this should serve as some sort of a warning. No matter how precisely we think we can project an object's trajectory through our solar system, it can change as a result of outgassing or the result of other objects passing close to it. And this is something we also need to keep in mind, because an object like this particular comet, which is three times the size of Everest, well, that impact would be civilization ending. Even if you were 2,000 kilometers away from the impact site of a comet like this, well, the force of the blast would be 1.1 billion megatons. And although the blast would not be quite this horrifying, even at 2,000 kilometers away, deciduous trees would ignite, much of the body would suffer second-degree burns, it would be an utterly devastating explosion that would also, by the way, generate an air blast at a speed of 573 miles per hour, once again, 2,000 kilometers away from the impact site. So, if another comet enters into 
into our solar system and again has an unpredictable trajectory that's carrying it uncomfortably close to Earth, well, this is something that needs to be taken very seriously indeed. It could be a civilization ending event. That being the case though, what do we do about it? Well, in the case of objects like 2007 FT3, NASA is finally going to deploy a solution or at least an early warning system known as the NEO Surveyor spacecraft. It will be positioned at Lagrange Point 1 between us and the Sun. A Lagrange Point is sort of an interplanetary parking lot. Balanced out by gravity, we know that that location will be stable and a satellite satellite we put there is likely to remain there, and since it's located between us and the sun, it will be able to detect these near-solar, near-Earth objects before we can see them, and give us a lot more advanced warning on any of them that might present a threat. In addition to that, it will give us a lot more observational data on these objects as well, because currently, as far as objects between 100 meters in diameter and a kilometer in diameter are concerned, we only know where about 20% of them are. And now that I've shared all this sobering information with you, I hope you would all agree that that's entirely too small of a percentage. If you'd give me an opportunity, since I don't have a sponsor for this episode, to sponsor myself, I'd like to point out that I am essentially a one-man operation. All of my scripts are self-written. Very little of it are created by anybody else, although sometimes my generous teammates do contribute content to this channel, but 95% of it is created by me. I do all of my own editing. Virtually all of my own work is done by yours truly, aside from assistance with live streams over the weekends, also my thumbnails created by a very generous supporter, but again, for the most part, I'm doing all of this myself, and I would really like to add at least a modest staff of a couple of part-time employees. I can't do that without your support, and that's why I've been asking for Patreon support so often lately. If you would like to join the dozens of people who have signed on to my my Patreon community over the last couple of months, well, all the details are in the description. If not, however, please like and please subscribe. That's more important than anything. And as always, stay angry about space.